Okay. I want to welcome everyone here again tonight to our study of Joshua, chapter 16 to 17, uh, Joseph's inheritance. Well, it's what we're speaking of is Ephraim and Manasseh. So let's begin with a blessing. Baruch Atad and I, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddushanu V'mitzvotah B'tzivano L'asok B'dibrei Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commands and commands us to engross ourselves in words of Torah. All right. Um, tonight is uh, Memorial Day weekend in, in the United States, so I'm not real sure how many folks we're going to have. I know that some are out because of their, their traveling or they got family in town and so forth, but that's okay. We will. Uh, it's still going to be going to be recorded on Facebook, and so we'll be in we'll be in good shape anyway. All right, um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, here we are in in our timeline where we are with talking about Ephraim and Manasseh. We talked about Manasseh a little bit already, but uh, tonight I'm going to go ahead and basically just complete all of all of Manasseh and finish that out. All right. And um, so, and here's our, our picture of, of um, where the tr 12 tribes, you know, where they got, to, it's, a, it's a full view of all of Israel and what uh, the, the territory that they were, that they were uh, given. And so before we get started then, um, were there any questions from two weeks ago? I mean, we didn't meet last week, of course, but uh, were there any questions from last week that anyone would have a, que uh, a question about uh, or a comment about? Okay. Um, well, let's go ahead then. And tonight we're going to be talking about right here, Manasseh, Manasseh, and Ephraim. Uh, those, those areas right there. So I uh, wanted to kind of, talk about a little bit about um, Manasseh and you know they have a massive uh, compared to the other the other allotments to the other um, tribes of Israel they got seemed like a, a lot more and and you know you say well they also have the largest population perhaps so but there is another reason for that is that uh, Manasseh was the firstborn of Joseph, and uh, so he got a double portion from Joseph. And it seems, though, then that that even though Judah became the preeminent one in in all of the tribes of Israel, uh, there was still a special place for for Joseph because he ended up being the uh, the uh, Mashiach or the um, uh, uh, salvation uh, of the children of Israel, all the children of Israel, because of Joseph. So therefore, he he got a preeminence that was that was out of place uh, from the normal way of uh, sons inheriting from their their fathers. He he ended up getting actually a much larger portion than did than did even Judah. So, um, and we see that, that Manasseh was the only tribe to receive land on both sides of the Jordan River. Now, where, uh, where did all of this come from? Uh, there was a blessing, a Jacob's blessing that was in Genesis 48 to 20. When he, and it says, then he blessed them that day saying, in you shall Israel bless by saying, may God make you like Ephraim and like Manasseh. The, thus he put Ephraim before Manasseh. All right, now this, if you may recognize that this is the blessing that we, uh, that we give to our boys every Shabbat, you know, we, we put our hands on the boys and we say, uh, you know, may you be like Ephraim and like Manasseh. And so that's where that blessing comes from and so that's we see that uh, Manasseh was blessed and then there was also not only Jacob's blessing but there was also Moses blessing where in Deuteronomy 
33 and 17. He said, the firstborn ox, majesty is his. His horns are the horns of the wild ox. With him, he gores people all at once to the ends of the earth. They are the myriads of Ephraim. They are the thousands of Manasseh. So here, you know, Moses is giving them a blessing uh, for both boys. And it's kind of hard to look at and say, okay, which one is the is the biggest? How big is a myriad and how big is a thousands? Uh, but um, it just shows that Manasseh did get the lion's share of the land. Now, um, they, um, let's see if I got, yeah, here's, a, here's a, a map of the eastern side. And it shows the, the land that Manasseh got. We're going to talk about the Bashan. And you remember that was where Og and Sihon were and, and that uh, the son of uh, Manasseh, um, uh, who uh, he was, uh, he, he took over the land. And so Moses gave him actually a lot more land than they probably would have because he did uh, take the initiative and go in and, and uh, conquer a lot of this land. Um, so, um, you know, we have to think of the inheritance of Manasseh, both on the east side of the Jordan, as well as the west side of the Jordan. And, uh, uh, we'll be, we'll be looking at, at both sides here. Remember that the east side was given to Manasseh early on, even before the conquest of Canaan. And those people in uh, Reuben, Gad, and uh, the uh, half tribe of, of uh, Manasseh, certainly the ones that stayed on the eastern side, um, they were given this land, but in return, they had to promise that they would go over to the west side of the Jordan and fight with Israel against all of the uh, Canaanites so that uh, they could conquer all of, of Canaan and which they agreed to do so. And then after the seven years of war after conquest, then they came back home. Uh, they, they had crossed over with 40,000 troops into, into the uh, west side of the Jordan into, uh, into um, Canaan itself. All right. So, um, uh, any questions on that, uh, that part of, of, of the inheritance of Manasseh on the east side? Any comments or questions? You'll notice that a lot of this stuff on the, on the uh, you'll, you'll see right here, Golan, all right, and these, these areas here. Well, you know what? That's, that's back to being Israel again after the 67 war. And uh, Israel warned Jordan, do not come against us in this battle in 67, uh, or it will not end well with you. And so Jordan still came against Israel. And um, of course, Israel prevailed. They took over the, uh, the Temple Mount. They captured all of Jerusalem. First time in 2000 years that Jerusalem had been in the hands of uh, Israel. And they took the Golan Heights. Recently, uh, our president, President Trump, uh, said that uh, the United States recognized Israel's sovereignty over this area here on the western or the eastern side of the Jordan as being Israeli territory and Israeli land. And so um, that was, I mean, if, if you didn't catch that, that is a big deal. That is a huge deal that uh, President Trump would uh, recognize that Israel had a right to that land. They were attacked. They uh, defended themselves. They took that territory and made it their own. Well, guess what? God had already given that to Israel 3,500 years ago, and now it's just they're taking it back again. So uh, that was um, it's a big deal, and uh, fortunately, you know, Israel is going to take that, and they're actually going to eventually going to have all of this stuff uh, uh, down, um, you know, even further south than just that area of the Golan Heights. They will take more territory as time goes on, and under what circumstances? 
we really don't know at this point, but um, that um, you know we will we will see that uh, in in the future. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's go ahead with our with our uh, reading here. And and again, I've I've muted everybody. But if you have something to say, please just unmute yourself and uh, speak out, and uh, then we can discuss it. And uh, um, um, Cynthia is saying that the Trump did this. Uh, uh, recognize. Um, you're saying that he recognized Golan yesterday. He may have made it uh, official yesterday, but he had he had tweeted. He yeah he pro signed the proclamation yesterday, but he had actually signaled that uh, two or three weeks ago. <laughs> so if you're in if you're a tree of life, uh, uh, Messianic congregation next week, and uh, you will see a slide on that where Trump uh, officially. Uh, recognize the uh, Golan Heights, so which I'm particularly proud of because uh, uh, the Golan Heights makes some great wine, and the uh, um, uh, so now that wine is officially Israeli wine, and uh, even though it was already kosher, and I have several bottles in my in my wine rack, uh, great. All right, so. Um, <laughs> All right, I just got a hug and a kiss from my granddaughter, and you guys didn't. Okay, you just missed a blessing. All right, um, let's go ahead and read the uh, the first portion of Joshua 16.1. The allotment up for the children of Joseph went, went from the Jordan at Jericho to the waters of Jericho on the east to the wilderness going up from Jericho through the hill country to Bethel. From Bethel it went to, out to Luz, and uh, then continued to the border of the Archites at Adaroth. Then it went uh, down westward to the ter territory of the Jophthalites, and uh, try to say that 10 times quickly, to the territory of Lower Bethel Horon on to Gezer, uh, and ended at the sea. So the children of Joseph, Manasseh, and Ephraim received their portion. All right, now the Easter, the Jordan River basically turned out to be the, the eastern boundary for, for Manasseh. Um, and uh, Benjamin was the, the southern boundary of that. But the boundaries actually were, were quite fluid, and they, they kind of overlapped a good bit. And um, so here's a, kind of a representation. And really, if you look at some of the, the different maps, they the 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 um, boundaries are portrayed a little bit different. For instance, on Gad, you will see down here if you can follow my little hand things there um, that the the territory of Gad extended up here almost uh, you know to Issachar and then back down just kind of a finger up there like that on the Jordan River and another finger up here over on the on the east side so that it almost like two horns sticking up there for uh, for Gad others didn't have that but at the same time you know I mean these these uh, it's not like these were foreign countries it was sort of like uh uh, it's kind of sort of like uh, not even even the fluidity of uh, states, you know, where we have state lines, um, but um, would be even even property lines. I mean, property lines are even more uh, rigid than that. But uh, because we do know that Ephraim had cities that uh, they settled that were in Manasseh and these, you know, uh, Benjamin was kind of swallowed up in Judah, and then Dan says, "Ah, oh, we don't like it here. We're going to move up to the north." And and so uh, these things were uh, they were given to him, but they really weren't one of these things where they were so rigid that you had to have a passport to go from one side to the other, and they um, uh, so they were just kind of general general. Uh, boundaries and not something that was really hardcore. All right. So um, 
but this is a this is a good map that kind of shows some of that uh, that what Manasseh and what Ephraim uh, gained. Now remember Ephraim, even though the, he he was given the main blessing, Manasseh was still the the firstborn child, and so Israel. I mean the 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 tribes uh, Joshua and so forth. They recognized that even though Jacob had given uh, the the blessing to Ephraim, they said, well, yeah, but Manasseh is still the, the firstborn. He'll get a double portion. And uh, probably also it was one, of, for some reason, Manasseh was one of the most prolific of the breeders and uh, had the, the highest uh, population. So that's why, again, another reason why they got more land because the Bible said it was given to the the, the uh, people according to their their tribes or according to their families. So, basically, trying to equalize the the amount of land given by to each clan or each uh, each each family, so that everyone had enough that they could sustain themselves. And um, so we see that. Uh, over here in in uh, Manasseh, there was the son of of uh, Manasseh. The oldest son of Manasseh was a guy named Machir, M A C H I R, and he drove out the Amorites from this area. And uh, uh, so, this would have occurred sometime after the the um, defeat of Og and um, uh, Og went at Edre and and uh, let's see I don't know if we can see that yeah at, at Edre here uh, after Og was defeated then uh, 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 Makir went ahead and and kicked everybody else out and so Moses said good job Makir you can have that and you can have Gilead and and uh, uh, so anyway that was um, that was that area on the east side that. Um, um, Manasseh took now this just just for your your own information this area over here in uh, Manasseh that Manasseh took which is Jordan today if you've ever been over there uh, back in the day when they took this over a lot of this was heavily forested there's references to that that Manasseh wanted more land and Joshua said hey you want more land to do this go go uh, clear the forest you know there's a lot of forest over there clear the forest today not so much forest more like uh, dry stuff but uh what they uh this area was very rich it had uh somewhere between uh even today i think it's got somewhere between 28 and 42 inches of rainfall every year if i remember right but it's it's an area that has a lot of of uh orchards a lot of date uh, production and vegetable production, very rich area, actually, a lot of volcanic um, stuff. And um, um, I clearly believe that ha if once Israel, again, takes possession of all of this land, it will be blooming even more so than, uh, than it does today under, uh, under the Jordanian rule. But that's just a personal opinion uh, that I hold. And uh, so don't build any doctrine on that, okay? All right, um, any, co any comments or questions while I get a drink? Okay, thank you for that. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and look at um, some of the other um, uh, the scriptures that, that we go on. The uh, in Joshua 16, 8, 8 through 10, it says, from Tapua, the border went along westward to the Wadi Kana and ended at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, according to their clans, together with the towns which were set apart for the children of Ephraim in the midst of the inheritance of the children of Manasseh all these towns with their villages, but they did not drive out the Canaanites that were living in Gez Gezer, so that the Canaanites continued to live in the midst of Ephraim to this day and became forced laborers. Now, 
Okay, so the Ephraim, Ephraimite cities were actually inside the Manasseh territory. And so this kind of showed how fluid the boundaries were, even though the land around it may have technically belonged to Manasseh. They had cities that were inhabited by the clans of Ephraim. Now, I don't know, and I've never read, I, I, just, I just don't know how they differentiated between the, uh, the different tribes. You know, did they have uh, um, different type of clothing? Did they wear a different kind of a sash? Were they like the, the um, uh, Scottish and the Irish where they wore tartans that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, or something like that? that uh, distinguish the various clans we really don't know but uh, it did show that there there were differences and that Ephraim took some of the cities or given some of the cities even though they were within the boundaries of, uh, of Manasseh so um, then in verse 10 I think here's a here's a very interesting thing here that so the inhabitants of Gezer were not driven out but remained as forced laborers now it seems to me that what happened here is after seven years of war um, the the Ephraimites the, the Manassehites I don't know how you say the ites from Manasseh Anyway, the guys from Manasseh and the guys from Ephraim, uh, after seven years of war, they said, okay, we've had enough. And these guys from Gezer, uh, we're not going to go against them and drive them out or kill them, even though the Lord said that that's what should happen to them. We'll just make them our, our uh, forced labor. And then that gives us, their, you know, they were given the jobs that the Ephraimites didn't want to do. Um, so, um, basically what happened is that they allowed the people from Gezer, the, the Canaanites, the, who had, you know, they had their own Canaanite religions, pagan religions and so forth. Um, they were allowed to stay right there in and amongst the, the Ephraimites and the people from Manasseh. And that then became a source of uh, pagan worship, of um, uh, idolatry and so forth that, that actually became a problem for, for Israel for an awful long time. And uh, it led up, that sort of behavior and so forth led up to their um, uh, being conquered by Assyria and later a uh, hundred years later by uh, Babylon and um, you know going into exile part of that was that they did not drive the people out of the land and so they is kind of like a, a splinter that uh, gets infected they just left them there and they it didn't take the the effort and the pain to excise those uh, those people and therefore it eventually uh, led to their downfall. Okay. Um, and that, you know, that there's 16 verses in chapter 16. And, and so it's basically just talking about how the Manasseh took, uh, took all of that, that land on the East and the West and, and uh, Ephraim got there. And then chapter 17, uh, just kind of enumerates that a little bit more. Talks about the uh, the uh, the rest of the children of Manasseh. So this is a uh, now this is the uh, allotment for the tribe of Manasseh, the firstborn of Joseph, to Machir, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead. Uh, since he was a man of war, he got Gilead and Bashan. So for the rest of the children of Manasseh, according to their clans, for the sons of Abiezer. Uh, Helek, Asriel, Shechem, Hefer, and the Shemida. These were uh, the male children of Manasseh, son of Joseph, according to their clan. So they just enumerate these different ones. The one to remember, of course, is Makir, who um, uh, 
was evidently a great man of war and he uh, subdued a lot of the area over on the, well, most of the area on the Eastern side. And um, uh, the, that was pretty, they ha he had some pretty formidable uh, enemies there in, uh, in Bashan. But it was, uh, it was an area that was um, uh, well worth the battle to, for them to take. Now, um, so what this does, these, these first verses there of chapter 17, it, it kind of rolls it back to Jacob's blessing where the firstborn Manasseh was not given that primary uh, blessing, but he was still the firstborn. You remember when Joseph brought his sons to, uh, to uh, Jacob uh, for the blessing, and he says, okay, here is Manasseh uh, on your right-hand side, and here's uh, uh, Ephraim on your left-hand side. And uh, so Jacob said, okay. And he crossed his hands over like that, put his right hand on Ephraim and his left hand on Manasseh. And Joseph went ballistic and said, no, 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 dad, you don't understand this. This is Manasseh, the firstborn. This is Ephraim, the, the secondborn. And uh, uh, Jacob, uh, Israel uh, fired back at him and he said, son, I know what I'm doing. Don't mess with me. And so he put his hands over there and he made, you know, Ephraim got the preeminent blessing. Manasseh um, got the other blessing. But still, as it turned out, uh, Manasseh, for some reason, became a, a mighty nation. They were, they're very prolific, had lots of uh, Lots of family, lots of uh, of, uh, of offspring. Uh, it, it's obvious that they didn't have as many televisions as uh, Ephraim did, had a, a larger population, and so it just appears to me that Joseph was favored among the other tribes because if you look at the size of what Ephraim and Manasseh got, well, it was in much greater proportion than. Um, than what uh, the other tribes got. But, and I, I guess you could look at that and say, well, the reason for that is that uh, basically there's in kind of recognition that Joseph was the Mashiach for that generation. Joseph was responsible for the salvation of the, the rest of the the family of the rest of the tribes, if had it not been for Joseph uh, being in the position that he was in 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 uh, Egypt, that uh, the rest of the the family would not have survived, and so therefore his family then was blessed by God, and they continued to prosper, and they got the 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 larger portion of the land uh, after after Judah. Of course, Judah was also had a, a large, uh, large area of land. So, um, going on, any 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 comments or questions? You guys are real quiet tonight. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, going on. Now, there's a couple of things that I wanted to pick up on in Joshua 17. About last week, or last time we met, we talked about uh, Zelophehad, and uh, uh, here he was, the son of Hefer, son of uh, Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh. So um, he was, let's see, one, two, three, four, I mean, he was the great, 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 great grandson of, or something of Manasseh. And uh, guess what? He didn't have any sons. Had no sons, but only daughters. These were the names of his daughters. Mala, Noah, uh, Hogla, Milka, and Tirza. Um, I'm not really sure if we even used those names before. I have seen, seen girls named Noah and Milka, but not uh, Malan, Hogla, although there is, I'm a hog from Texas, but, uh, and uh, Tirza. So they appeared before, uh, Okay, the, uh, Cynthia said that uh, you, do, you do see Tirza 
in the IHOP community up in Kansas City, Missouri. So they appeared before Eleazar the Kohen, before Joshua, son of Nun, and before the leaders, saying, Adonai commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our kinsmen. Therefore, according to the commandment of Adonai, he gave them a portion of a portion among their father's uh, kinsmen. Okay, so yeah, I don't know if you remember um, how that how that played out, but um, there was a, a back in when they were still, you know, wandering around in the wilderness, and they were just giving up the 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 um, bl land and so forth. These daughters, these these uh, five daughters went to Moses and said, hey, look, now everybody else, of course, you'd, you'd think that there were people that, I mean, men that did not have have um, sons, that all they had were daughters. I mean, you, you would think that. But anyway, these are the only, the only ones that had enough chutzpah that uh, went to Moses and said, hey, look what's happening here. Because we're women, and uh, you know the the way that the Middle East works over here, uh, we don't uh, uh, we don't get anything. We don't get any land. We don't get any inheritance. We don't we don't we get nothing. We can't even drive these days. So uh, he goes to uh, they they went to Moses and Moses says, "Oi, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that." So uh, Moses then he went to the. Uh, um, went into the before the lord at the at the um in the holy of holies and this was actually you read about this in numbers 27 uh a chapter yeah numbers 27 is the chapter for that and so moses went to, before the lord and said hey um you didn't give me instructions on this what do i do about these women and uh, moses uh was told by the lord look yeah, give them an inheritance just as if they were sons. So uh, what we see here, I think it's very, very significant among the, the uh, in the culture of the day that women were given equality in inheritance uh, equal to the, to the men. That just because they were women, uh, there were other things that, okay, yeah, that... Uh, uh, they had some some issues with the way women were treated, but at least for Israel, they could inherit land, they could own land, they could they could possess uh, land, which was uh, was really the only thing that you really could possess uh, for in in long term. Um, but I think it's very significant about the way God dealt with with uh, women. And even now, even more so than when Yeshua came along uh, 1,500 years later, and he uh, really gave much more equality to women in, in, in some cases. I mean, it just kind of put women up on the, the pedestal where they belong, that, uh, you know, they're, they're something special. God, God bless us. There's a, there's a Jewish, um, there's an old Jewish saying, that um, says that, um, if I can remember this right, uh, that an old man in the house is just a nuisance, but an old woman in the house is a blessing of gold. And uh, something like that, you know, where the, an old woman in the house, they're, they're a real blessing and they, they make the house hum and they, you know, that's a good thing. But an old dude that's retired, He's just nothing but a nuisance, okay? So that's why I stay out in the garden most of the time. I don't want to be a nuisance. So anyway, so these gals, uh, you know, they asked for, and they actually received a, a, a portion, uh, just like the men would have. So that tells me that, you know, God's laws are, they're elevating to women. They're elevating to all, all mankind. These, these laws were so revolutionary to the region at the time, uh, you know, of, of equality and a blessing to people. So God's law, Torah, was a, was a law of, of mercy. It was a law of grace. And so anybody that uh, 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 tries to tell you differently, um, 
just, you know, just say, well, bless their heart and, you know, pat them on the head and let them go because they don't really know what they're talking about. Okay. God's law is a God is a, is a law of mercy. It's a law of grace. Um, and it's not a law of condemnation as such because uh, God, I mean, he blessed his people through that law. All right. Um, so let's go down here and look at uh, yet the portion of the children of, of Manasseh could not take possession of these towns, the, the towns that they were given, because the Canaanites were resolved to live in that land. So, but when B'nai Israel became stronger, that they put the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not utterly dispossess them. Then the children of Joseph spoke to uh, Joshua saying, why have you given us only one allotment and one portion for an inheritance? For we are a numerous people whom Adonai has thus far blessed. Okay, up to this point, okay, they, these people were given the land. Remember, they were given the land before the conquest was totally finished, if you remember that, that uh, all of the Canaanites, all of that kind of had not been driven out, but God said, okay, all right, seven years, that's enough. You got, a, you got a foothold in there. Go ahead and take possession of the land. Then each and every, each and in, uh, every individual uh, tribe, then you're responsible for cleaning up your own territory, getting rid of these uh, the, the uh, Canaanites out of your land. Well, uh, it says in, that for Manasseh, the Canaanites were very stubborn and they didn't want to leave their land. Imagine that. Uh, that you know, they said, hey, just because you want us to leave doesn't mean that we, we're going to leave. So anyway, they, um, um, they didn't leave. But um, the people of Manasseh, the children of Manasseh then said, well, okay, you can stay, but you're going to be our uh, hired hands. You're going to be for the, the, the forced labor, as it were. You're going to be the the water carriers and the and the wood cutters and uh, uh, you know you're going to be the ones that muck out the septic tanks and all that kind of stuff, things that the people from Manasseh did not want to do, and so they allowed these people to stay, and so what uh, um, what uh, what did that mean? Okay, they and then they came and complained to Joshua said. Look, we uh, we want more land. We're big. We got a lot of people, and we want more land. And uh, so, what happened then was, well, Joshua, uh, you know, they, they they went to Joshua and said, "Why have you given us only one allotment, one portion for an inheritance? For we're numerous people, whom Adonai has thus far blessed." So Joshua said to them, "If you have so many people," go you up to the forest and clear a place for yourself there in the land of the Perizzites and the Rephaim, since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. The hill country will not be enough for us, the, the children of Israel, uh, Joseph replied. But all the Canaanites who invalid, inhabit the valley land have iron chariots, both those who are in Beth Shean and its villages and those who are in the uh, Jezreel Valley. So basically what they're, they're, what they're saying, and keep it going on here, but Joshua spoke to the house of Joseph, to, the Ephraim, to Ephraim and to Manasseh, saying, you are a numerous people with great strength. You shouldn't have just one allotment because the hill country should be yours. Though it is a forest, you will clear it, and its furthest borders of it will be yours, for you will drive out the Canaanites, even though they have iron chariots, and even though they are strong. So they go to... They go to uh, Joshua and they're complaining and I said look we would like more land because we got a lot of folks and we just want more land and and those old nasty stinking Canaanites they're right there where we would really like to have that land because it's in the valleys and that's good stuff and and we want that and so but give us some of the other land that the other tribes already have that's subdued and then that way we don't have to fight for it we don't have to clear any forest we don't have to do the hard stuff. And Mana uh, and then Joshua basically told him to go pound sand. He said, look, you've got land. Go and clear your forest. Kick the Canaanites out. 
the land is there. All you got to do is just kick those people out and it's yours. And, uh, uh, you know, they're complaining, well, they got chariots. He said, doesn't matter. You're strong, figure it out. And so, um, that was, that was basically what, what Joshua told him. He said, look, uh, uh, grow up and go after these people. Even if it's hard, do it. And so that's one of the things that we see from this, that these guys were not particularly interested in doing the hard stuff. They wanted to take the easy way out. So they took these people, instead of driving them out, killing them, going to war and all that, they just says, okay, look, you guys wanna, do you wanna live? Then you can be our day laborers or you can uh, be our servants. And so the Canaanites looked around, they said, okay, there's about 10 of you guys for every one of us. Uh, yeah, we can, we can live with that. We'll, we'll carry your water and we'll cut your wood just as long as we get a chance to live. Well, you know, guess what? The Canaanites, you know, they, whatever they, you may say about them, they had some mighty fine looking women. And so what happened is the men of Israel saw the women, they said, uh, you know, and boys will be boys. And so then Basically, the Canaanites were able to just kind of assimilate themselves into the Jewish heritage and the Jewish families. And uh, along the way, the uh, Canaanite girl said, well, if you really love me, you'll uh, allow me to put these token little idols in the house. Or you'll, you'll put up one of these, uh, these uh, pillars out in the garden, you know, and, and stuff. That's If you really love me, you'll do that. And that's what happened. They, the, the men of Israel kind of looked at that. Yeah, okay, that's no big deal. Uh, and so eventually, you know, the, um, the um, idolatry and idol wor the idol worship and the, you know, all of those, those things from Canaanite then became a part of, of Israel. And of course, that was very much against what God wanted them to do and eventually got to the point where they forgot about God and his worship and, and so forth. And um, then as a result of that, Assyria came in and took over the Northern tribes. Then a hundred years later, um, Nebuchadnezzar with the Babylonians came in and took, uh, took the Southern tribes, destroyed the temple and uh, carried Israel off into exile. So anyway, this is the, um, that's the story of the inheritance of, of um, Dephraim and Manasseh, the sons of Joseph. And so, our, and I will conclude with that. Are there any